Novi Port, Russia. A small sea town on Siberia's northern Yamal Peninsula is home to a frozen secret. This place is extreme. It's north of the Arctic Circle and winter for about eight months out of the year. There are no roads in or out of this place. Everything comes in by boat. It gets battered by terrible storms and it can be iced in for months at a time. A group of scientists working near the river Ob come across a dilapidated wooden hut on the beach, half buried in snow. Inside the hut, they find a ramp leading down into a large, dark tunnel, which is at least 15 feet across and seven feet high. It's absolutely stunning. The floors, walls, and ceilings of the tunnel are covered in a glittering layer of frost. Further investigation reveals thousands of feet of interconnected underground tunnels and over 200 small caves branching off them, all with frosted walls. They seem to go on and on forever, like some type of really cool icy labyrinth. It's really cool, but what is this place? The ground in this part of Siberia is entirely permafrost. The tunnels have been dug into the icy earth that's as solid as rock. It would have taken an extreme effort to dig such an extensive network of caves and tunnels in such hard ground. Gas, coal, and anthracite are all actively mined in Russia's Arctic region, including on the Yamal Peninsula. The village of Novi Port was established as a coal bunkering port in the 1920s as part of the Northern Sea Shipping Passage. The route traveling along Russia's Arctic coast is so long that the Soviets tried to fuel boat voyages by using locally mined coal at each stop. Scientists don't find any evidence of big machines or industrial mining operations in these tunnels, so it couldn't have been a mine. But running along the ceiling throughout the tunnels are old electrical wires and lights. People were clearly down here regularly. But what were they doing? This part of Siberia is known for its horrific winter weather. So could the Novi Port community be trying to escape the freezing conditions? Entire underground cities are known to have been built in places where the climate is too harsh to live. In Coober PD, Australia, Residents of the town near the area's extensive opal mines escaped the exhausting desert climate by living underground. The tunnels of Novi Port show no signs of domestication. Plus, above ground, there are clearly enough regular houses for the 2,000 people that live there. So if they weren't escaping the elements, were the tunnels built as an escape for something else? The ancient Turkish city of Derinkayu went 18 stories below the surface, complete with living quarters, shops, and escape routes. In case of attack, the city's population of 20,000 could quickly retreat from their above-ground houses and live entirely underground. But no one could live in these Siberian tunnels for any significant length of time. It's, it's way too cold. And there's no evidence of any infrastructure or even a source of water that would make it habitable. So why would they need such a large underground tunnel? If it wasn't built for civilians to live or hide in, then perhaps it was built for a military purpose. Historians have seen similar tunnels built into the ice before. During World War I, a battle was raging at high altitude in the Alps. To avoid the Italian guns and escape the challenges of the mountain environment, the Austro-Hungarian army decided to build tunnels into the glaciers. They dug at least seven miles of tunnels into the ice, creating rooms, kitchens, and storage for over 200 soldiers. Were the Novi Port tunnels built for a similar purpose? If it's military, it's probably from the mid 20th century, when tensions between the US and the Soviet Union were escalating. Are these tunnels connected to the Cold War? Both nations engaged in espionage, built arsenals of nuclear weapons, and developed secret bases. In the 1950s, the U.S. began Project Iceworm, a top-secret underground base, built
built into Greenland's glacial ice cap. Nearly two miles of tunnels were constructed to hide and potentially deploy 600 nuclear missiles capable of reaching the Soviet Union. Could this have been built as part of Russia's Arctic defense strategy? The Siberian tunnels are located inside the Arctic Circle, which is prime real estate if you're the Soviets and you want to launch long-range missiles at America. But if it had been a military post, you'd expect to find evidence of that in terms of weapons, guns, reinforced doors. There's nothing like that here. It just can't be military. But whoever built this, they knew what they were doing. There has to be a reason why the Soviets would dig a thousand feet of tunnels in ground that's as solid as concrete. Why would anyone do that? In northern Siberia, the enigmatic purpose of a frozen labyrinth of man-made tunnels has researchers baffled. As the scientists continue to investigate the tunnels, they learn that, strangely, the temperature is the same year-round, only fluctuating between 5 and 10 degrees Fahrenheit. That temperature finding is interesting. Peoples living in the Arctic have always known that beneath the permafrost, the ground remains the same temperature all year round. The frozen ground keeps food preserved for long stretches of time. So how do you keep the spoils of your hunt from spoiling? You freeze them. Maybe these tunnels are a kind of giant fridge for people? During the Cold War, the Soviet economy was fragile, and its people were faced with frequent shortages of money and food. But the frozen Siberian tundra is no place for large-scale animal farming and the main industry was fishing. So given the proximity of these tunnels to the main port of a fishing community, it's entirely possible that these tunnels could have been a giant freezer for local fishermen. After the fishing season ends, the Kara Sea freezes solid, blocking the shipping lane for at least six months. Until ships could access the ports in the spring, the fish needed to be frozen. However, the Yamal Peninsula is so remote that the cost of providing the electricity required to power huge electric freezers was too high for the Soviet Union. The Soviet government did what the inhabitants of the region had done for centuries. They harnessed the might of the USSR to build a massive permafrost cache, a supersized version of what people had done at home for generations. Compared to transporting heavy machinery and materials to build refrigerated warehouses, it was cheaper for Stalin to use people from across the Soviet Union who had been exiled to Novyport as forced labor to dig in the frozen ground. For six years, the state forced laborers to use pickaxes and shovels to dig deep into the frozen ground. It was sub-zero most of the year, and the ground is frozen so solid that their tools would have been snapping constantly. Those conditions must have been unbelievably harsh. When the tunnels were completed, they could hold up to 1,750 tons of fish. The local economy flourished as they could control the market for their prized catch. 